no life we know that compares to what we can create through the energy of imagination and faith. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Tara, and I am one of our seminary students here at the chapel, and as always, it is a pleasure to be your speaker today. If you would please rise if you are able and join me in singing our opening song, Come People of the Risen, if you please join me in attitude of prayer. Infinite creator of all that ever could be imagined, we are grateful for the opportunity to gather inside these blessed walls to worship as one family of light. We welcome all, both seen and unseen, those present in the chapel and those joining us from home. During this time of worship, may we all be blessed with open minds, open hearts, and open ears, knowing the vibration of joy, happiness, playfulness, and faith guide the adventures we all experience every day. As we take flight, may we be open to hear the guidance and love that is offered to all within our time together here today. We take this time to pray for each other and the families we represent, both seen and unseen. We pray for all those whose names have been placed on our prayer list, for those in hospitals, nursing homes, hospices, those who are alone and those who are without homes, and those who have no one to pray for them. We as a collective family pray for all souls everywhere. We pray that during this time of worship that each heart be touched and illuminated with thy loving light and infinite wisdom. Let us now affirm this by praying the prayer with Master Teacher Jesus. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and then forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from error. For God is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Now is the time we declare our Declaration of Principles as accepted by the United Metaphysical Churches. Um, this is the foundation of our belief system, and they can be found here up on the screen. We believe in God as a infinite intelligence. We believe that the phenomena of nature, both physical and spiritual, are the expressions of an infinite intelligence. We affirm that a correct understanding of such expression and a living in accordance therewith constitute true religion. We believe in personal responsibility and that we create our own happiness or unhappiness as we live in harmony or discord with natural, spiritual, and spiritual laws. We affirm that the existence and personal identity of the individual continues after leaving the physical world. We affirm that communication with spirit is a natural experience and is demonstrated through mediumship. We affirm that examples of prophecy and healing found in the Bible and other sacred texts are divine attributes found in all people. We believe that the highest morality it is contained in the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. We affirm that the doorway to reformation is always open to any soul here or hereafter. Um, okay. Uh, the title of our lecture today is Creating from Neverland. And our scripture comes from 1 Corinthians 12, 6-7 from the Lancet translation of the Bible. And there are diversities of powers, but it is the one God who works in all things in men. But the manifestation of spirit is given to every man as to help him. May spirit bless the reading of the scripture. Joy, happiness, and wonder is the energy to activate the imagination, to truly be a co-creator with God. We as humans have the innate spark of the creator running through each of us, enabling us to co-create the realities we wish to perceive. We are the co-authors. 
We don't predict the future. We create it. When we awaken to our true power of our own divinity, learning to harness the power of our imaginations, emotions, and thought forms, we can only then begin to consciously create the reality we wish instead of unconsciously. Creation is endless, and it's always evolving. On this earthly playground, as we age, we become so hooked by finances and worries and just life in general, we forget our own true creative power. We forget what it's like to imagine, to play, and to create with childlike wonder and pure belief. The divine mind is our playground and it's the energy of the thought forms we admit is what controls what is reflected back to us through our creations. Many times we unconsciously create, not realizing that we may allow our negative emotions and thought forms to go forth and multiply. When we claim our divine power, we can consciously shift our thought forms to happier, higher energy we can then create the life we truly desire to see. Think back to childhood. Do you remember the adventures? Do you remember the joy? Do you remember the innocence? Do you remember the fun you created in your own little fantasy world? Do you remember the feelings you brought back from such a place? Well, let's think some happy thoughts, sprinkle a little pixie dust, and fly off to Neverland once more. Although I am not a huge Disney fan, I know it's shocking. Trust me, it's shocking. <laughs> I am more of a Hans Christian Andersen and Brothers Grimm kind of girl. Ooh. <laughs> but Walt said it best. First think, second believe, and finally dare. All the ingredients needed for us to be the co-creators of our destinies and the master of our realities. Many fairy tales, folk tales, and stories from all over the world tells hidden tales, uh, hold wisdom and truth within its writings. Some tales are special. They hold more than what's on the surface. For most of us, Peter Pan is a story of a boy who refuses to grow up, battling against the foe, both afraid of immortality. However, hovering just below the surface, tells a hidden tale of creating our realities from a magical place of innocence and wonder, and battling against the negative thought forms that seek to capture and corrupt our creations. All this has happened before, and all this will happen once more. Our part of the story begins with the flight to Neverland, the place we created, the blank slate, the place that gives form to thought. The place of all possibilities. Wendy, the female feeling spiritual side of us, and her brothers, John and Michael, decide to go with Peter to Peter, innocence, joy, and belief, to Neverland. How do we get to Neverland? We fly. It's easy. All we have to do is think wonderful thoughts. Any happy little thoughts, anything that will raise our vibrations and our consciousness to a place of joy, happiness, and childlike wonder. And of course, a little bit of pixie dust. Now there's an interesting concept here, and that is that Peter can always fly. Why? Because of his childlike belief. Peter doesn't worry how it's done, just that it is done. To fly, we need to let go of how we think it should be and raised to a new, higher, greater consciousness where nothing holds us down. We as humans tend to let the negative thought forms drown out our inner flame, that flame that wants to create in this world. When we find a place within ourselves where we are completely free and uninhibited to create magical little things begin to appear. Once we dare to take flight, heading towards that second star to the right and continuing straight on till morning into the light, we find Peter, Wendy, and her brothers and Tinkerbell energy high upon the clouds looking down over Neverland, excited about all of the possibilities for adventures, 
and creation that can be imagined in such a perfect, beautiful little space. We can find our own Neverland deep within ourselves by going inward and connecting with spirit through stillness med and meditation. It's just that simple. Down below, spotted by Captain Hook and the Pirates, negative thought forms, they begin to mount an attack, shooting cannonballs at the elevated little group of adventurers. Oftentimes, we allow the outer world to invade our inner world thoughts, intruding on our ability to keep ourselves at a higher consciousness. Peter instructs Tinkerbell to take Wendy and her brothers to the Lost Boys, positive thought forms, while he distracts the pirates. Tinkerbell, a finicky little sprite, races to lose Wendy and convinces the Lost Boys to shoot her out of the sky. There are times during consciously co-creating, we revert to old ways of thinking, entertaining lower thought forms that transmute the energy, making it go haywire. We end up sabotaging ourselves and corrupting our own creations. As the group is reunited within the lair, Tinkerbell's little plan to sabotage Wendy is revealed. Peter then in turn banishes Tinkerbell from their space. We have the ability to let go of lower thought forms and realign ourselves back into the happy, joyous energy of a higher consciousness and co-creation. All we need to do is transmute the energy. Think happy little thoughts. We can do this by simply catching our negative thought forms within our hands, examining them, acknowledging them for what they are, and thanking them. Once we acknowledge within ourselves the reason why they exist, we can then release them with love. The group decides to tour Neverland, splitting into two different groups. Wendy and Peter are off to see the mermaids, while John, Michael, and the Lost Boys head to capture the natives. As the boys depart, they, depart, they sing a happy little tune of Follow the Leader, illustrating the law of vibration. In order to manifest anything, we must first match our vibration of what it is we're seeking. We will only attract to ourselves the vibration that matches up with the vibration that we're emitting. When we emit a positive vibration, more of that energy falls in line and it multiplies. The mermaids, emotions, on the other hand, are jealous of Wendy and seek to drown her. We must be aware that our emotions also contribute to the vibration we emit. When we decide to go to Neverland, the place of creation, we must have our emotions in balance or we could end up drowning ourselves. Manifestations created from out of balance emotions still serve a purpose, bringing forth a lesson for us to master and learn. All things created from God are given to all men to help them learn and evolve. Meanwhile, Hook has captured Tiger Lily creative power, and is holding her prisoner inside the middle of Skull Rock. When we allow ourselves to become hooked by negative thought forms, we end up holding our creative minds prisoner, thus limiting the infinite possibilities we are ever, ever able to imagine. Peter comes to Tiger Lily's rescue by taunting Captain Hook. When we allow joy and happiness to break the bonds of fear, we unlock our creative power. We are able to perceive all the infinite possibilities we could ever imagine. Captain Hook is on a mission to find Peter's lair, and it is revealed Peter has banished Tinkerbell energy. The pirates, negative thought forms, are sent forth to bring Tinkerbell to Hook. Captain Hook charms Tinkerbell to reveal where the lair is located, and the pirates set forth to capture Wendy and the Lost Boys. Sometimes in life, we may allow negative thought forms to capture us, and it's okay, I've done it too. More times than I hear it with However, if we are self-aware and understand that sometimes on some level, we may allow ourselves to be captured, it's yet just another opportunity for growth and self-mastery. 
In the final battle, the pirates, negative thought forms, are thrown overboard. And Peter wins by capturing Hook within a flag. Peter takes mercy on Hook and tells him to get out of Neverland. But in true ego fashion, Hook takes one more sway at Peter and ends up throwing himself overboard where the croc awaits. When we are able to take control of our negative thought forms and toss them out to sea, we reclaim our divine power to co-create that which we desire. Captain Hook versus the croc reveals negative creations are fleeting. They don't stay as long as we don't give them our divine power. Finding our inner power to take control of our negative thought forms, it's not an easy task. It takes some lifetimes to master and really could be a whole lecture on its own. But when we discover who we truly are, face our triggers and shadows, connecting with spirit, we can heal ourselves. Discovering our inner truths, our divine power, and the courage to live it. There is one important scene within the Disney narrative of this Peter Pan story the 1960s version, starring Mary Martin, so vividly narrates this next concept. And honestly, my favorite version out of any Peter Pan tale. But just to be clear, I am an 80s baby and I am not looking to age myself any more than I need to. Yeah. Do you remember the scene with Peter after Captain Hook had poisoned Tinkerbell? I can see the sparks of long gone memories firing and some smiles returning to some people's faces. Tinkerbell's light had faded and almost gone out. Peter turned to the audience and said, she's gonna die unless we do something. Clap your hands, clap your hands, and say, I believe in fairies, which I do believe very much in the energy of fairies and, and mythical creatures, but that's just in my own little fairy, fairy fantasy world. With all the children in the audience clapping their hands and shouting, thus bringing Tinkerbell back to life. We must have unwavering faith, knowing that God will deliver. Ask and you shall receive. If we don't wholeheartedly believe in our ability to co-create that which we desire at the highest vibration and for it to be delivered to us in divine timing, we sabotage ourselves, allowing negative thought forms and doubt to sneak back in to capture and corrupt our creations. By becoming self-aware of our truths, we empower ourselves with the faculty of faith, knowing all things manifested by God are there to help us and to teach us. And there are diversities of power, but it is the one God who works all things in men but the manifestation of spirit is given to every man as to help him. We as humans have the innate spark of the creator running through each of us. A truth we all come to learn at some point on our spiritual journeys. God has given us all the divine gifts, but it rests upon us on how we choose to use them. Do we claim our power, rising to a higher vibration, choosing to take an active role with our creations, or do we continue to give our power away to fleeting negative thought forms that seek to capture and corrupt our creations? Being an active co-creator means we embrace positive influences and we open ourselves to the assistance from the universe, from our teachers, from our guides, and from spirit to breathe life into our creations. Consciously co-creating calls us to align with our higher selves and open our inner wisdom. We can ask ourselves, what would our higher selves do in this situation? Or WWJD for some of our old schoolers. It is then up to us to go into meditation and be open to hear the guidance and follow through with it. The co-creation process, it starts from inspiration. What is the heart's desire? What is it that we wish to experience in life? Asking ourselves these questions 
is the beginning stages of fine tuning what we wish to create. We have to start with the idea. The process also calls for us to surrender the illusion of control and move into the flow of spirit. We may be guided to do something that we have never done before. And we must cast the pirates, negative thought forms, out to sea, trusting the inner guidance we've received. Show up and be an active participant, following our intuition and guidance from spirit. But most importantly, acting on it. If we feel drawn to a person, place, book, or group, go. Go do it. What is it that's holding us back from living the fullness of the life we want to have? Katie Anna, a spiritual teacher and channeler who has blessed all souls many times with her presence, once said, we must show up and be present in our lives to consciously co-create with God. This, this is the pixie dust. The other ingredient needed to fly. It's more than just happy little thoughts. We need the action behind it. Remember, Wendy, John, and Michael couldn't fly without the pixie dust. And the pirate ship couldn't bring the creation back into the physical world without it either. If you want to view paradise, simply look around and view it. Think happy thoughts and raise your vibration. Whatever that means for you. Watch a funny movie, create a craft, meditate, play, dance like nobody's watching. Whatever it is that brings you joy, do it. Be free to put your rose-colored glasses on, but also be aware enough as to know when to choose to take them off. When we awaken to our true power of becoming co-authors, holding a higher vibration, working the creation process, and controlling our negative thought forms, we can be the master of our realities, with our fairy tales coming true through the power of pure imagination. I leave you with this. When traveling in a world of your creation, what you'll see will defy explanation. You wanna change your world? There's really nothing to it. Just simply look around and view it. Blessings.